Artifacts themselves don't tell the whole story. You often need the voices of the native people as well. You can hear those voices in the little town of Washington at the Institute for American Indian Studies, or IAIS. A rich resource for Connecticut tribal communities, the public, archaeologists, and historians. Eastern Woodlands was more floral patterns. Mm -hmm. You get out into the plains, it's more geometric shape. Education director Darlene Kasich belongs to the Scaticoke tribal nation. A lot of people don't realize that there's five Native American reservations here in Connecticut. The Mohican, the Mashantucket Pequot, the Pequot, the Golden Hill Pagusset, and the Scaticoke. Here, rotating exhibits present a more complete narrative of 10,000 years of local Native American culture. There's two points of view on things. There's the colonial view from the boat and the Native American's view from the shore. And the different ways that Native people looked at things determined how they lived their lives. So if you don't know that and understand that, you're not going to be able to tell that Native American history in the true way. Interactive games make history here come alive. We're going to be locking up your watches and cell phones because we want you to be telling time a little bit differently. Newly launched at the IAIS, a wigwam escape room. You also need to cook two different types of food. Imagining themselves in the 16th century, mind you, players get 90 minutes to accomplish a series of tasks. You're asked to help out a neighboring village to gather supplies to help them out. They're in trouble. But you have to do so as if you step back into the year 1518. Solve problems the way that Native people would have done. Not so easy, for me anyway. I bet this is going to create water now. Critical thinking in the escape room helps debunk stereotypes, says Kasich. They call it primitive technology. Try it. You know, it's not so primitive. How you put two things together to make a tool. How do you utilize the plants that are out there? And Kasich adds there's always more to learn and even more to do. I'd love for us to be that home away from home for displaced natives, people that don't live near their reservations anymore. Something that we're always trying to get the word out more and more and more. The Litchfield Hills have endless opportunities to get outdoorsy. Our friend Jerry Griswold is partial to the White Memorial Conservation Center. I got a big mouth. You know, I love this place, and I believe truly that if I'm passionate about something, I want to share it with you, and you're going to get passionate too. You'll be swept up in that tsunami of craziness. Siblings May and Elaine White donated 4,000 acres of their family's property in 1913 to create White Memorial. They had 6,000 other acres that they gifted to the state of Connecticut that is the foundation of our park system. So 10,000 acres have been given to us forever. That has left uh, an indelible imprint on the face of northwestern Connecticut. Had it not been for the Whites, Lord knows what this place would look like now. The Whites' former summer home is now a nature museum, regularly attracting school groups. When we visit Griswold's office here, we discover something else about this nature evangelist. She loves bats. So you have been on a mission to sort of destigmatize bats. Oh yeah. Basically, yeah. Bats, right? I'm Bats 101. She's a rehabilitated bat. A licensed bat rehabilitator for the state, Griswold works with scientists to keep tabs on local bat colonies. All across North America, the bat population has been decimated by white nose syndrome, a fungal disease. So this is your garden variety big brown bat. This is full size. When they spread their wings, they're about 10 inches wide. She's got some real teeth there. She's got some real teeth. I mean, they're insectivores. They, they eat nothing yeah. but bugs. A big brown bat is a moth predator. Despite their ferocious appearance, Griswold assures us bats are intelligent and gentle. I've never been attacked by a bat in 27, 28 years of handling bats. You're never going to have an issue with them as long as you don't touch them. If you see one that needs help, there are wildlife rehabilitators in every single state. Why are bats so beloved by some of those who know them well? Well, Griswold says these little creatures have a huge impact. Oh, a number one controller of night flying insects worldwide. There's a cave True. of bats outside of San Antonio, Texas that eats 250 tons of insects a night. Um, if you like tequila, you wouldn't have a drop of it without a bat. They're pollinators, they're seed dispersers. And also the, the saliva of a vampire bat can save your life. It's synthesized now, it's used in hospitals to dissolve blood clots. Every single human life 
is impacted positively on a day-to-day -day basis by the work of bats, period.